Hey, hey, what is up, guys? It is Arvin Hardware, and in today's video, we're gonna build the best budget $1,000 gaming PC build that you can get in early 2021. Now, we're gonna go over the whole building process step by step from start to finish, and we're then going to start up the PC and we're going to look at what kind of frame rate or FPS you can expect in some of the most popular games in case you decide to build this PC. Now, if you find anything you like, all items are linked up down below. Now for a little bit over $900 for the entire PC build, you'll be able to run all popular games at 1080p and 1440p at ultra settings with respectable frame rate. And if you want to play around with ray tracing, yeah, that is possible on this machine as well. But we're gonna look into the gaming performance, including ray tracing, right after the assembly. Now inside this particular PC, we find a third gen, 6 core Ryzen that does excellent, and even the most demanding AAA games, and for RAM, we can a pair of the CPU with 16GB from Corsair. We find a 500GB SSD, an RTX 3060 Ti, and everything is contained in this great looking Cooler Master case. Anyway guys, timestamps can be found down below. Now before we get started, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about the video, drop a like if you enjoyed the content, and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. So coming in at $63, the DS3HB450M from Gigabyte makes the base for our PC build. This is a reliable and powerful B550M motherboard that comes with a lot of features that other similarly priced boards are missing. We find 4 DIMM slots. 8 USB ports, 4 SATA ports, as well as an M.2 slot, so you can upgrade to a super fast M.2 based SSD later down the road. Now, by only spending about $70 for the motherboard, it will allow us to spend more of our budget on components that have the biggest impact on the gaming performance, the graphics card and CPU. Speaking of CPU, for today's build, I went with the 6 core 3rd gen Ryzen 3600, who is finally back in stock again. Now, this budget CPU comes with 6 cores and 12 threads, and the processor supports something called SMT, which nowadays pretty much all games support. And this will allow your game to run as smoothly as possible without stutter. If we take a quick look at the gaming performance in Cyberpunk, we see that the 3600 is actually trading blows with the 96. 100K. Now looking beyond 1080p gaming, which uh, yeah this PC is meant for, we see that the CPU yeah, rarely becomes a bottleneck when gaming. Anyway, the Ryzen 5 3600 has a base clock at 3.6 and 4.2 GHz boost clock. It is based on AMD's insanely popular Zen 2 and 7 nanometer architecture. And with Zen 2, AMD has been able to bump both IPC clock speed and latency stand against previous generation. And all of this plays an important role for gaming. As we can see, a motherboard comes with a retention frame. But since we're using a cooler with springs rather than retention clips, we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. Now, installing the processor is very easy. You want to locate this golden triangle, and this lines up with a corresponding triangle on a motherboard socket. Simply turn the CPU so that the triangles match up, open the metal arm, drop the processor into the socket, put the metal arm down, and our CPU is now installed. A cooler comes alongside our processor, which we're gonna use in today's build. Now, while this heatsink does not offer the best thermals and noise levels, that against some of the popular third-party CPU coolers, it is still perfectly good enough for gaming in a case with good airflow. The cooler installment is also pretty simple. In case you're installing the cooler for the first time, there should be a thin layer of pre-applied thermal compound. Otherwise, you need to apply a bit of compound on the CPU first. Position the CPU cooler over the four spring screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure that the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate, follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with the full turn. And with all four spring screws connected to the back plate, tighten them until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the fan, a CPU fan header on the motherboard. 
Now we're almost done with the motherboard, the only thing missing is memory and for today's build we're gonna go with 16GB from Corsair Vengeance, RGB Pro, which yeah unfortunately actually gotten pretty expensive lately, therefore I'm gonna link up a cheaper kit down below as well with similar level of quality and performance. Simply pull back the clips for the second and the for dim slot and plug them in just like so. Now we can take our motherboard assembly and slide it into our case and for today's build we're gonna go with the Cooler Master Master Box MB320L coming in at just $62. This is hands down the cheapest and best performing MATX case with high airflow on the market. It comes with two 120mm ARGB fans which will keep our system cool and quiet. In the front we find some honeycomb mesh intakes on either side of this so called dark mirror front panel and this creates a very nice and satisfying look but in case you want optimal airflow Cooler Master also sells a similar front in mesh instead of this dark mirror and you find this case also linked up down below. Now there is room to fit a 240 radiator in the top and a 240 radiator in the front. You can fit up to two SSDs here and two mechanical hard drives and overall guys I'm super hyped over this case. Well done Cooler Master. Now before we install a motherboard we first need to remove these two PCE slots otherwise we won't be able to install our graphics card later on. And now we can install a motherboard and with the CPU fan already installed we can just grab onto the CPU fan cooler and gently slide the motherboard into place and this can be done uh, by either having the case standing up or laying down. We secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided from Cooler Master. And with the motherboard installed before we install a power supply, graphics card and storage, this is a good time to install our chassis cables that takes care of the front audio, USB as well as the power button. So let's start with USB 3. This is a wide connector. It is fairly thick and it is impossible to miss. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. The connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we got front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, yeah, before we're done we got the front panel connectors and you find these on the lower right side. This can be a bit tricky guys. But don't sweat it, just take your time. For our power supply, we're gonna go with the Corsair CV650 watt unit. And this is a high quality power supply with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification, coming in at just $69. With top of the line performance, low noise and quality components, ensure that your PC and your components run safe. You want to make sure that you got the fan facing downwards then gently slide the power supply into place and secure it. There is a couple of cables we're gonna need here. First up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Time to install our SSD and for today's build I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 480GB of storage. And while this isn't the fastest SSD out there, it offers a great mix between price and performance. A 480GB is actually more than enough to fit a few games. Now keep in mind guys, you can always upgrade to a bigger drive later down the road as both the case and motherboard has room for up to two mechanical hard drives and another SSD. So in order to install our SSD, we're gonna use uh, these four rubber discs and four standoffs provided by Cooler Master. Plug in the SATA cable that comes with our Gigabyte motherboard as well as the SATA power connector coming from our power supply. Route the SATA cable through one of the various routing holes and plug it into our motherboard. Alright, so the moment you guys have been waiting for, time to install our graphics card and for today's build we're gonna go with the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti coming from Gigabyte. This is Nvidia's latest $400 GPU designed to replace the RTX 2060 Super. And compared to the 2060 Super, the RTX 3060 Ti is without a doubt a substantial upgrade as we're going to find out in just a second. Now like the 2060 Super, the 3060 
Ti comes with 8 GB of super fast DDR6 memory clocked at 7000 MHz. Slide the graphics card into place like so, plug in this PCIe cable and our graphics card. Yeah, it's installed. Now there is only one thing missing before it's time to turn on our system, and this is. Yeah, the RGB. Now because our motherboard doesn't have support for addressable RGB out of the box, we need to add this so-called ARGB controller. Simply plug the RGB fan connector to the RGB hub, then take a SATA power connector and plug it in. We also need to connect the included case fans to the motherboard as well. And what is left to do now is just to flip the case around and slap on the shroud that is hiding all the cables. And if you followed every step along the way, yeah, your PC should power on. So let's find out how it performs. Oh, also guys, I almost forgot, first time you're booting up the system, make sure to double check that the RAM sticks are running in its XMP profile. And we're doing this by uh, tapping delete while we're seeing the Gigabyte logo. We then head over to the overclocking session, we select profile 1 and we are now good to go. Jumping to 1440p, which yeah is really what the card is marketed for, we quickly see that the 3060 Ti runs very well at this resolution, even with a lot of graphics details. We're averaging over 60 FPS in every title tested, and this includes even Valorant and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War as well. If we take a look at Godfall for example, the 3060 Ti is not a whole lot slower than the RTX 3070. And looking at the 2060 Super, we see that the 3060 is actually 48% faster. In Watch Dog Legion, the 3060 Ti does not disappoint either, where it outperforms the last generation 5700 XT by a whopping 30%. And the 3060 Ti also performs very well in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as can be seen, running just about 9% slower versus the 3070. Last but definitely not least, if we take a look at 4K resolution, we see that the RTX 3060 Ti continues to show good form and it actually performs very good in 4K resolution as well. However, this resolution is not recommended in all situations as the frame rate can get close to 30 FPS in some titles, as can be seen. However, keep in mind guys, we're running the games here in ultra settings and so you can always dial back on the settings a bit to reach a satisfying frame rate. Now all PC components we just went over can be found down below. Now I am starting up a Discord server guys and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join the awesome community and start discussing PC builds and issues and everything in between. So I'm going to hang out there and answer you guys guys' questions and, and it would feel awesome if you guys wanted to join. Now watch it if you two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.